It's in every way, start getting involved because it's in our nature. Okay, Christ, everything about him is a life-giving spirit, but he started giving life even within. With, he was hanging out with all his disciples. All his disciples went with him on the mountaintop. Okay, and first thing he said, preach the gospel. He said first in Jerusalem and then out. Everything began here and then it started going out. Okay, so I want you to start being part of being a life-giving spirit is giving life where you're at. And then from that, we get to do everything outside, right? Like I'm working in Bollywood and wherever I'm going, I have to be a life-giving spirit. But it started first here with me starting something, right? For the body. And so even as a body, come here physically. I encourage everyone to physically attend local church. If you are living in Bombay, there should be no reason why you cannot come. There should be no reason. And I'll tell you what the reasons are. The maid didn't come. I have a child who's crying. My husband said something. Mother-in-law. I didn't get up early. I cannot get up early. Busyness. Bombay has like the spirit of busyness. And as sons, we get to rule over busyness. Okay? There is no such thing as busy. If you have decided you want to come, then there's nothing that can keep you from coming. And I told you, in your families, you've got to be Lion King. In my own family, I was Lion King. I remember mom once telling me, if you go, my BP will go high. This was many years before she was not in the kingdom. I said, if I go out, your BP will come low. And I went. And then a BP came down. I'm just saying, we've all navigated through this. One can fear and be timid. And the other one knows who you are and you'll still step out. Okay, now do this in wisdom. I'm not saying follow my formula. I'm, I'm just saying in all things be led and don't forget who you are. If you're the first one in the family, if you're the son, then you're the head. Okay, and all things will submit to you. They're looking for you to take strength. So you don't forget who you are. Okay? Beloved is awake? Alive? Okay. Sharper than a two-edged sword. Beloved is single-minded. So how many humans here? Are you human? Are you sure? Yes. Very good. You are single-minded. Beloved is single-minded about who we are. The word human comes from Adam, mankind generation. Okay. And uh, this message is just about getting that mind of human because I see so many stories on Instagram, my favorite human, you know, and I see that all the actors and actresses say this, the best human, my most loved human of all the humans. And uh, sometimes I see sons talking that like human, you know, I'm only human. You're not only human, you're a son. Human died when you got baptized, when you went down. When you rose again, you rose non-human in Christ, new creation species. Okay, so I want to begin with one verse that is not on the board, but can I have it by the PowerPoint team? Okay, it's in John chapter 12, verse 22. Jesus is called the son of God. He is also called the son of man. Why was he called also the son of man? Because he had to become man, go on the cross, die as you, as me. Yes, rose again. And now we are all in him, sons of God, not man anymore. Okay, okay, let's read John chapter 12, verse 23. Do we have it up? So before we start, uh, I had the opportunity to go to, you saw the pictures that we went to um, the orphanage. We're going to be part of that orphanage, just stand with them. And, uh, uh, you know, I loved it. First I went, I have a new respect for the, the Catholic Church. Okay, what they did, their sisters taking care of it. And all the sisters know they're part of the body. They're part of our body because they believe in the blood of Jesus. Okay, they may not see it all together straight, but they believe in the blood of Jesus. And uh, what I saw was that that part of the body, all they do, they're called to serve. That's why you see Mother Teresa and all of this, and they're just helping the poor, they're feeding them, they're taking care of children. That part of the body is doing that. <laughs> they're called to minister. Okay, of course our role is different. We are called to put sonship in and for you to awaken and walk as sons, but they're still part of our body. 
And so I sat there with the sister, we had the sonship book and I said, I want to minister. We started with that first and she's like, you know, we cannot do that uh, here because, you know, they're tied up with a lot of things in India and how we do, we take children and if you're talking about Jesus and things like that. So at one point, <clears throat> I just sat there, I wasn't sure, you know, where I want to be part of here. And then suddenly the children came in. And then when I looked at the children, it didn't matter. So I just said, okay, I said, we're still going to support you. I said, we're going to support you, whatever you need. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking at the children. And then suddenly, sister opened up and started sharing about her life and how Jesus came in and she, you know, she started this orphanage and all. And uh, she said, you know, we can speak about father. I said, yes, I would love to speak about father. Let's get creative in the way we share with those children. And then I remembered mom's books. They just have father written in it, you know, and they're all in the schools in India. So I said, my job is just to feed the truth. It's God's job to sort of like bring them into that uh, revelation. And another orphanage that we went to, these were children and uh, we met Sister Joy there. And she said, Priya, you know, you want to share about the Lord and all, but they will not be able to understand you. I said, why? She's saying these are children with special needs. She's saying the parents have abandoned them because they're special needs. So you will come and speak here and go to another orphanage. And she told me a name of another one. There they'll be able to understand you. And then we entered that room and there are just these children, 30 children, um, you know, with special needs and just sitting and these sisters were just feeding them and we were saying hi to them. And I felt like, uh, you know, it's so amazing that maybe their earthly parents gave up, but the heavenly father didn't. And then when you look at them, you know, some people say like, oh, I was uh, that uh, uh, Psalm 139 in my mother's womb, I was formed. And it's very hard to see that the father did that. Do you think? And then we, we push that verse on somebody and say, accept it. No, this is the way the father formed you and be good in it. No, God didn't do any of that. Adam fell. Adam sinned, Adam fell. And the whole of creation fell into a realm of sin and death. That is not because of the father. It's just a cycle, it's a, it's a rem because Adam fell, because sin came in, everything now, even in that, when children are born deformed or whatever, that's just because of Adam's fall. Sometimes we attribute it to God, no, it's not. But Christ brought in a new order. And because of him, we can expect to see restoration. And I really believe that there is a generation and coming where we're seeing, like just laying hands on children like this and just everything coming, coming back in order because that's what Jesus came to give, a new order. So we decided, you know what, we're gonna stick here. And if these kids only need prayer, and I believe in the power of the word, that what the word can do, because it's, I don't need them to be thinking that the seed has power, that even if I speak this word, it's gonna do something in them. So then even though sister sent her somewhere else, we decided we're gonna stand with sister and gonna show her something else. Okay, so we're maybe going to go there once a month and raise up some sons there. Just take the sonship book, just go in that room and just speak that word. Lay hands on them and just be there. I really feel because if a son cannot bring in hope, then who can to those children? And so we're going to do that. So beloved is going to do that. And it's amazing that both of those, when we asked them, I said, do you need financial support? They said, no. Sister said, no, I want you to pray for these kids. So it was amazing. Okay, so... Um, so how many are, uh, we're going to raise up people doing that, okay, and uh, how we're going to do that, I know that the Lord will lead in that. Okay, so let's, beloved is awake, all eyes open, no one is sleeping, if I catch anyone sleeping, your name will be announced, okay? Actually, you cannot sleep, no spirit of distraction, okay? Let's read that. Jesus said, verse 23, 12, verse 23, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. What did he say? The son of man. He calls himself son of God, but now he's saying the son of man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for, for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will also. There my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, my father will honor. 
Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to them. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. This voice did not come for me. He doesn't need any affirmation or any confirmation about who he is. He said this voice came for, came for you. Okay, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all, you know, in Greek, the word people is not there. It just says, I will draw all to myself. What, is, what was he talking about before this? Now is the judgment of this world. So what is he drawing all to himself? What is he drawing all to himself? Judgment. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And if I, I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all judgment. He is drawing all judgment to himself in his body. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. The people answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. That you may become you're not a son of darkness anymore. You were in darkness and then it says you came to Christ. He brought you out and now you've become a son of light. Okay. I want to read uh, Hebrews 2. Let's quickly go there. Verse 10. For it was fitting for him. Hebrews 2 verse 10. For it was fitting. Do we have it? I'm just going to start reading. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies, he who sanctifies, who is that? Beloved is understanding. Who is that? Who is the one sanctifying? That means setting you apart. Jesus. And those who are being sanctified, that is us, or all those who are coming in, are all of one. For which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. And the children whom God has given me. Verse 14, inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. So why did Jesus have to become man, take on man? See what it says here. Inasmuch as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, Adam was flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So Jesus took on flesh and blood, came, goes on the cross for you and me, goes on the cross as son of God, but also son of man. We go on the cross with him died but when you rose again you don't rise up again as son of man you rose again as sons of god yes so are you human so in your vocabulary get that word out i'm only human no you're only son 
today's message is just about little this because I just saw it, something small, something so insignificant. I hear it like very casually still spoken and I want that to just get out of you. Okay, we are in an atomic body, but it's a dead body. Our identity, everything is that of a son. As he is, as he is. What is Jesus at the right hand of God? He is a son of God. As he is, so am I in this world. Look at the testimonies that you are having. These are not testimonies of sons of man. These are testimonies of sons of God. I love Jigar's testimony. Jigar's testimony is the way a son should be in his workplace. You are there just like Joseph was with Pharaoh or Joseph was in Potiphar's house to bring Potiphar good success. That everyone can look at Joseph's life or Jigar's life and see, man, the minute this guy came in, Everything changed. A company has become prosperous. Because his heart there, the son's heart, always remember, is not to receive. Like, give me. That is sonship in the flesh. Like, what can they give me? But true son, Jesus came to serve. And it is there, you're there to serve, to be the best that everyone looks at you. Imagine, the people don't know his son. You and I know his son. People just look at him as this new boy has joined. And they look at him like this guy is working and this guy is saving for us and this guy is doing that the world, the outside world, which God calls a heathen world, can look and say that there's something different about this person. It's the spirit of excellence that you carry. And that's how you're supposed to be. Because sometimes sons go in and they just expect the other persons to give us, I am son, it should come to me, it should come to me. No, are you giving? You're being a life-giving spirit. And in a life, being a life-giving spirit, you'll realize because he's refreshing others, he himself is getting refreshed. You will be exalted in that place. Yes? Okay. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. <clears throat> However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our, our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his through his, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. Do you have the spirit of the world? Sons of God don't have the spirit of the world. We have not received the spirit of the world. We have received the spirit who is from God. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words with which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You're on one side, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. You are understanding. Okay? But the natural man, but the natural man, human, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Say that. Put your hands on your head and say, Mind, not the mind of Adam. Mind of Christ, not the mind of human. Mind of Christ. Are you human? 
human is adam god calls him a natural man you are not natural man you are in the second man that god calls last adam in christ okay as he is so are we john 3 so this is a conversation that jesus is having with nicodemus there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews this man came to jesus by night and said to him rabbi we know that you are a teacher come from god for no one can do these signs that you do unless god is with him teacher come from god he is looking at him yeah this guy looks like adam but he is not looks son of man yeah man but he is not okay no one can do these things unless god is with him jesus answered and said to him most assuredly i say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of god nicodemus said to him how can a man a man be born when he is old can he enter the second time into mother's womb and be born jesus answered most assuredly i say to you that means truly truly i say to you unless one is born of water and spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god water signifying baptism okay and spirit you cannot enter the kingdom of god why water because it's symbolic that one has to die and then you raised up how many of you have got baptized not sprinkling of water ducking in water all of you all have got baptized if no one's baptized write to rishi we'll get you baptized okay because when you went you went down human adam but when you came up you didn't come back human you came back son okay now see this it says here okay jesus answered most assuredly i say to you unless one is born of water and spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that which is born of flesh natural is natural human is human that which is born of spirit is spirit are you flesh it says after christ rose again we regard no one according to the flesh even not christ we we refer we see each other we bear witness in the resurrected christ okay say yes do not marvel that i said to you you must be born again the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it grows so is every one who is born of the spirit john 4:24 god is he just said in the previous that you have to be born of spirit now it says john 4:24 god is spirit those who worship him that means have a relationship with him must have it in spirit and so is god having a relationship with you through your flesh if you are in christ he is not having a relationship with you through your flesh he is having a relationship that's why jesus had to go and get condemned in the flesh on the cross so that now he can have a relationship with you and me in spirit and god calls that relationship what's the next word that's truth yes okay now see this 2 corinthians 5:17 therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh are you human do i see you as human you have human conditions you know when i met um, margarita beloved margarita i was on the road it doesn't matter and she was passing in a car thanks for marlene and we need sons like that to remind each other their sons okay rest is very powerful but rest did not look like margarita sit at home and don't go to the doctor she went to the doctor she went she was doing all of this then she got a second consultation and then all of that because she is a son in another realm all of that the surgery everything everything led to life led to life so the rest does not mean don't go doctor supernatural it'll go god works all things out for your good it just means the end result of, of all of that is going to be life for you yes 
So we have the spirit of wisdom with us. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ, we have known Christ according to the flesh. That means all the disciples saw him in body. Okay, physical body. But it says, now we know him thus no longer. So even Jesus, that's why I told you he chose Paul to, to give the, the message of Christ in me. Who had it? Paul had Paul never even hung out with Jesus because all the other disciples hung out with him in the flesh. But Paul is somebody, he never hung out with Jesus when he was physically there. So the revelation of Christ in me was given to Paul, different guy. Okay. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. How can he be in human then? If the Bible says he is a new creation, creation that means god created all of this man all of that and then 2000 years later boom different species came non-humans in the arabic body but not adam you're in christ yes are we single-minded about that are you human my most lovely human i'm only human yes you are only human i feel sad i'm only son Yes? Okay. I'll tell you why. You're becoming single-minded in small things. The ripples you'll see in the bigger things. Okay? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is you, he is a new creation. Old things, human things, Adamic things have passed away. Look, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That means bringing it back, not imputing their sins to them. Yeh sin consciousness kaan se aagaya? Not imputing their sins to them and saying like, come, way out of everything, all of that mess, come to me, I'm giving you offering, free righteousness, gift, so that I can have a relationship with you in spirit. See this, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. That's why sons, we are going forth and saying, hey, father loves you, come home. I'll show you the father. That's what you're going, just say heavenly father loves you. That's our ministry, ministry of reconciliation, okay? Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us, we employ you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God for he made him, who is this? Beloved is smart. You know why we go over the whole scriptures again and again? That you'll get up mugging it up. That you are so brainwashed on one side of the cross. You're so slapped in singleness. That's why you have all these testimonies. You don't even know. You think like, Are, same scripture. Le same again. Same, same, same. Yeah. Through, I, I told you, I've shared this dream. Before Beloved began, I had one dream. They were all going around one table, going round and round. And when they would stand in front of me like a child, you know how you have that first, second, third, when you win a prize. So they would stand on one, say A, then get off. Then the other one is coming and saying A, A, B, B. And I saw in the dream that out of repetition, they get perfected. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Same. You're so soaked in one that you go out and you feel everyone else is abnormal. Yeah, and then they catch on to who you are, your abnormality, you're bringing them in one mind. That's what one mind is, the mind of Christ. Jesus, I look at the Gospels again, I just feel like when he came on this earth, like he is one supernatural person, son of God, looks human, and then everything he's talking is like <laughs> scratching your hair, man. You, unless you eat my body and drink my blood. And then he says these things and I watch, you know, because sometimes I tell Rishi, I said, we know, putting these things on our group, the blood and all this. And I said, there are some unbelievers and how they must be looking at this, like, you know, the blood and, you know, like, what is this? And then Jesus said that. And then some got offended and some got it. So not to be, I was like, you know, preparing my heart, like, I don't get it. This is truth. And this is spirit. And we're just going to still push it out there. Okay. But he was so single is because that's who he is. 
about who he is and then everyone else could see who he is everyone could see who he is everyone in jigar's place can see who he is everyone can see who you are when you are very single about who you are someone recently i was hanging out with my college friends they called me a monk now i went there i have met these when they were in you know in my college days my first experience in the lord in nottingham okay so i was there in nottingham and uh, that time was my first uh, you know like in the lord and i had gone got saved and my first church experience so they seeing priya walking in that whole journey with christ now i meet them 14 years later they both married with children they meet people who are still single and she is praying so she, they both started making fun they like uh, you know you're still religious and you used to be in those miracles and all that and she saying so you become a monk now now either i could get offended at that you know they both are sitting making fun and all i i felt like it was not the time to speak anything and uh, i just started laughing i said hi i said wait till i tell my friends you call me monk i want to see their reaction and then one day you know i just uh, i knew that one day they will come to the monk <laughs> they will need the monk <laughs> okay and i will meet them again um so uh, anyways it was funny where was i the monk <laughs> okay he made him for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of god in christ let me come back to the monk story okay so they were both sitting and they were discussing and i was sitting then they were talking about the whole covid time <clears throat> and this one person she comes from a roman catholic background and uh, uh, you know the other person she she comes from a hindu background and they were both sharing uh, their lives and i said covid time was an amazing time for me i said i was out of the house i was laying hands uh, you know people were getting healed i said uh, in in darkness light shines the most and then i i saw this that all this girl did and to date since 3 years she has been staying in her house not getting out in fact the meeting that i went for that lunch was the time that she came out and she doesn't do anything and so fearful and just sits and i feel like she also she comes from jesus background and i felt like just open the bible and read it it is so true what is the difference two people sitting there one has knows about jesus but it's not a life the other person just opens it and knows this is the truth and can step out and i was looking at this friend of mine and i know her since my nottingham days 14 years ago and i remember that time she sharing about a dream of how this man in white came on a horse and something like she's falling in a chasm and he's giving her a hand and she said me priya i don't know who it is and 14 years ago i told her it's jesus and then she was sharing some story of her life you know it it was a little bad and she's saying i just looked up to the sky and i said god help me she's saying and priya all of these things happened and you know sometimes like as an overseer i can just sit and i see how many times god has tried to reach out to you and then you go through the idols you're doing all of that and i i can see the journey of she didn't have to go through a lot of it that the father has been trying to reach out is because sometimes you're so blind you can't see but as an overseer i could see both where they're at what the lord can do i kept quiet because it just wasn't my time to speak god is so good okay now look at this romans 5 death in adam life in christ therefore just as through one man sin entered the world who's the one man adam sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned you know i was having a discussion when people say you know what are people go and sin and all of that first i see do you want to believe what god definition of sin is sin just means missing the mark and you are not sinners because you sin we are sinners what does the bible say one man sin entered the world and death through sin and death 
spread to all men because all sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Verse 14. Beloved is smart. I'm reading to you something so that you can give it an answer back when people talk to you. Nevertheless, death reigned in from Adam to Moses. Okay? Death was there from Adam to Moses? Yes. Death was there. People were dying. Maybe 700 years, but people were dying. But the law was not there that time. Okay? Now see this. Even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam. Means he's saying... What Adam had done, these guys didn't, but now these are all guilty. So who is it saying? Who sinned? Adam sinned. And so we, is God looking at you? God actually says, because Adam sinned, death came in, death spread to all men, all sinned. Same way, in Christ, he became righteous. Now are you in Christ? Is he looking at you? Or is he looking at Christ? righteousness in you yes okay we are scripturally scripturally correct okay if you want to be sons of god are born again born from above okay <clears throat> even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of adam who is a type of him who was to come but the free gift is not like the offense for if by one man's offense that is Adam, many died. Much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man. Now, who is this one man? So, in this world, two mans came. I know it's wrong English, but two mans. One, Adam. Second man, Jesus. Okay? So, of which man are you? Jesus man. We are not Adam man. Okay? Adam man has death sentence, lives in a realm of condemnation. But we came out from one realm, from Adam man's realm to Jesus man's realm. Okay? Now see this. Jesus Christ abounded to many and the gift is not like that which came from the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses, means many sins resulted in Justification. Justification for what? Mom? Justification for what? Beloved is a smart church. You're justified to have life. Not justification for death. Justified for life. Okay? Okay. For as by one man's disobedience, who disobeyed? So you are not a sinner because of what you do. Blame him. Blame Adam. Why am I doing sometimes I act in the flesh? Adam. Yeah, it is true. But because of Christ, you become righteous. See this. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience... Why are you righteous? Because he obeyed. So whose righteousness are you standing in? Jesus. You know your heart can condemn you over an st Instagram story you put up. <gasps> I put this story up now. What will others think? <laughs> How are they reading? Hare, your heart can get so condemned. Should I? Should I not? And then you just stand. I don't care what I did. I'm righteous. <laughs> Everything. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. They'll view it just the way I want them to view it. Okay, now see this. Um, <clears throat> Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. The law entered that the offense might abound. You know, when Jesus came, he raised the bar. Whenever someone tells me, what if they sin? I always feel like they have a very shallow understanding of sin. But you know, if you say this, they'll go out and sin. I said, what is your definition of sin? And most 99 pe people you talk about sin, they think like it's sleeping around a sin or murder. Everything else... The small sins. Understanding. They both sin at a very low level. And then what did Jesus do? He raised the bar. So when the Pharisees were accusing, he just went, you think adultery is sin, even if you look at somebody lustfully is sin. Oh, if your eye commits you, pluck it out and pull it. 
because it's better, you know, to go somewhere without the eye than your eye that is doing. What did he do? Why was he doing that? Because the Pharisees, all of them brought it to such a small level so that they can slap each other with it. And then he raises the standard you, and he was telling them, you think you can keep this standard? You can't. And why was he doing that? So that you and I realize we are all guilty. We missed it. And we all need a savior. No one can get holiness in the flesh. And religion seeks holiness in the flesh. That's why Jesus came, had to go on the cross in the flesh so that he can have a relationship with you in spirit. Father can have that with you. That's why flesh is there. The Holy Spirit is in us. We subdue it. But you cannot arrive at holiness in the flesh till you have this Adamic body. You'll need a glorified body. And in that body, the law of sin and death will not be there anymore. Romans 6, I think. Yes? So your relationship, God is dealing with you in spirit. The more you are conscious of your righteousness, which is a gift, the more you can reign in life, in your health, in your relationships, in your finances. All of these things come with a sense of knowing that you're right with God. My father loves me. And you shake it off, whatever, and get up. And the reasons why you walk, even just like your father, is because it's not in your nature anymore. Okay? Now see this. Beloved is awake. Okay. Romans 8, 23. And he said to them, you are from humans. You humans. You are from? I am from? You are of? I am not of, are there any humans in heaven? You're confused. Beloved is not confused. There are sons and the whole kingdom. Okay. John 17, 16. They are not of the world. Now imagine, first he says, I am from above, you are from beneath. Now he's talking about his disciples. Peter, James, John. Now he's looking at them. He's praying this prayer to the Father. And see what he's saying. They are not of this world just as I am not of this world. Same. They are not of this world. Are they in the world? But he's saying they are not of this world. Just as I am not of this world. Sanctify them. That means set them apart. By your truth, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Now I'm also sending, so I am in this world, but I'm not of this world. God species among human species. Okay? See this. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. That means separated. In all things, was Jesus' conversation normal? You know, someone asked me yesterday, a couple of days ago, oh, we meet and all, and Priya, I, I tell them, don't talk all these things. They joke anyhow, they talk. So I knew that it was talking about carnal talk. Carnal talk only comes when you, in your mind is also carnal, meaning carnal is thinking too. I'm there also, I'm here also. The more you're coming to single-mindedness about who you are, it's an inside-out thing. Naturally, you won't say those things. Naturally, everything comes as a byproduct. The fruit is produced, is because you genuinely don't believe it. What does the Bible say? We believe in the heart unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. First comes believing. When you truly believe you are son, then everything what you speak, what you do, everything is one. You don't have to become ulta. Naturally, it'll come out there. A lot of times, I'm not psyching myself to not say this. Oh, 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 oh. It naturally, because I don't really don't believe it. So I don't even speak it. If I believed it, I would speak it. But the more you're coming into single-mindedness about who you are, then naturally you won't land up saying certain things. Yes? So we want everything to be real, not like outside in. Everything for a son is inside out. That's why it's not about quoting scriptures. First, when you really start believing the truth, then everything that you do and speak will flow. It is one. Preeti Nagi. Okay. You're closing your eyes and listening. Galatians 3, 26. 
for you are all sons of God. Are you human? Sons of God through faith in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on, you put on Christ or Adam? You put on? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. Some say women can't preach. That was in that time. I told you in the Bible now there's a word for everybody. There's a word for sheep, disciples, there's a word for sons. Okay? We don't get offended with them. But I'm just saying when you start seeing yourself as son, it says there's neither male nor female. What is the gender of the Holy Spirit? Son. Your mind cannot fathom it. Because a mind has programmed male, female. Son, new species. Okay? It's one. For you are all... Try... See this. There's neither male nor female. What? You are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ and you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Say I am just son. New species, new creation. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. For though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out. What does the spirit of the son say? Abba, father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So simple. You'll receive all things because you've become son. Different species. Okay? Slave has to worry about performance. Son inherits all things by blood. Okay? If Ephesians 2.19 Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the households of, household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God and the Spirit. We are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. In Isaiah, it says the government came with Jesus. There's a government for humans in this world, and we also have a government, different government that is working for us. Okay? Ephesians, Philippians 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Are you equal with him? Joined air means what? Prince William. Okay, let's not look at that because that is changing. But technically... If there was a king and he had two sons, will both the sons get the wealth? Hakdar hai? Are they justified to get the wealth? Of course. Why? Because they both came out of the king. They are bloodline. So joint heir means what? I've become Jesus as my older brother. I receive all things because I'm part of the same family and we both have the same father. That's why we'll receive all things. Yes? Humans are not receiving anything. David was what? Human. Adam. The Spirit of God came, the Spirit of God left. But everything changed 2000 years later in Christ, new species, sons of God came. Could David lay hands on somebody and heal? If the Spirit came, then the prophets were doing all of those things. But came and left. Now you are going out laying. Why? It's because Christ is in you. Much higher place. Okay? 
Yes, beloved, is awake and understanding. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of man, men, and being found in appearance in in appearance as a man okay he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross therefore god also has exalted him highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father colossians 3 if you then were raised with christ seek those things which are above where christ is sitting at the right hand of god set your mind on things above not on things of the earth humanic earthly for you for you is god a liar he's not he cannot lie if he's telling you something it is the truth for you died and your life is hidden with christ in god when christ who is alive appears then you will also appear with him in glory 2 corinthians 120 for all the promises of god in adam in human in christ are yes and in him amen all the promises are yes and amen where single-mindedness are you in adam are you in christ mom are you crying no oh. okay to the glory of god through us james 1 19 so then my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to be impulsive i think before anything comes i'm not human not adam i'm in Christ is because it says the impulsiveness of man does not produce the righteousness of God that means in that moment when you rest and just realize you know what this thing is coming to the Sun there is God's righteousness going and doing something for you that you cannot you'll see it you'll see who you are okay Matthew 6 do not therefore I say to you about your life what you will eat what you will drink about your body what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing look at the birds of the air for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not of more value than they which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature so why do you worry about clothing Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, he was the richest king in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the humans seek. The Gentiles, the ones that did not know God, okay? For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. You're already here. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Your biggest rest, my biggest rest, we've come back home to our Father. That our whole life, when we say is a finished work, it is a rest. What was God's promise, the promised land? He said, they shall not enter my rest. So I, was, I looked up this word rest. It says it's a habitation. It's a dwelling. That means it's a place where God brought us and said, Beta, now in all things, problems in life, learn to rest. And rest was for what? Jesus said, I have come that you may have rest for your soul where does all the chaos go on you saw a blood test a report anything where does the struggle happen where is the unrest in the mind 
So first thing he said was, don't worry, rest for your soul. So every time you get that thing, just say it is finished. You're looking at something that is disturbing. It is finished. My whole soul is in rest. And in rest is the most powerful place to be. In the Old Testament, when they got out of rest, they got hit with stones. So we get hit when we're out of rest. But when we're in rest, your mind is at rest, like things are coming, but I'm laboring to put my mind at rest. Just be still, not get agitated, not be impulsive. And then in my rest, I see the righteousness of my father go and do something for me that I cannot do because I'm in another realm. I see the supernatural happening for me. Yes? Hebrews 4. There, therefore, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest, the Father's rest, has ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. And I love this that the next verse says, for the word of God. I believe this is talking about rest. That the rest of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrows and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Rest is a realm that we live in. It is the most powerful place to be in. And that's where you and I are. We're in the rest of God. And when you are in the rest of God, say, Jesus came to give me rest for my soul. My soul is in rest. In rest. That means in all things, you take two seconds to think. When all things are agitating, you know, Priya, just wait. Think. Rest. We're in a different realm. We're not in Adam anymore. We're in Christ. And in Christ, if anything has come, it's a finished work. I'm not alone. I'm fathered in this area. And everything is going to be fine. You know, I went, I made such a big uh, issue about my gym, I told you. I had a trainer. I really liked my trainer a lot. Then my trainer said he's leaving. So I wrote a mail to the owner of the gym. And then, uh, you know, I said some bad words. I fought with everybody. I said, I make a police case. And all of these things happened. And, uh, you know, I just made a big ruckus and then they've stopped talking to me, you know, in the gym. I go there, I work out, but all the trainers, like they look at me like this girl came and made such a havoc. And then I decided I didn't want to go to the other gym because I really like this gym a lot. And uh, suddenly they all decided to give me the refund, everything. But I said, okay, let me try another trainer. So I went, I took one trainer, he was okay. Then suddenly he went for four days, so I didn't bother because he went for four days. I just said, okay, give me another trainer. And then suddenly I got this trainer and he is so good. He is so happy, like just extremely high, started making me doing other workouts and I actually really like him, maybe more than the other one. And then I felt like I should have just rested it out because your whole life is a finished work. So just learn to flow with all things. Like if you're supposed to have that trainer, that trainer will be there. And if it's time for the trainer to leave, you're gonna get somebody else it's going to happen. And then I learned to realize that our whole life is fathered. So sometimes it looks unfinished and it looks like ruffling going on. But in that ruffling, don't allow yourself to get sucked into it and sort of feel like, oh, there is a storm. And then remind yourself, yeah, in the storm, I might be in the storm. But my whole life is a finished work in the storm. And I learned to sleep knowing that everything is finished. Yes, Jesus was sleeping, not outside the storm, in the storm. Did the storm change a state of peace? He is peace in the storm. Nothing can affect the sun because who you are, in fact, affects everything around you. Yeah, so state of peace is what? Order. Storm looks disorder, right? It's disorder. There's thunder, there's water going up and down. Absolute disorder. But Jesus calls himself peace. What does peace mean? Order. His order. In the disorder. And then even as he's rested, he brings his order to all the disorder around him. 
Yes? We are sons of the light. Sun species, not human species. Are you human? No. Your son. Yes? Okay, let's give a tithe of this quickly. Just say, Jesus, you are my high priest. I thank you for all the increase, for all the life, for all the understanding that you've gotten to me. I have the mind of Christ. As you are Jesus, so am I in this world. Yes. And we just rest in that. Just thank him. Just thank him right now. Just pray in tongues. Just lift up a praise. She rahadari yara rapapa. Husto rahadara rapa. Sharahadari yara rapapa. Kuloro ropa. Father, we just thank you and we rest in this truth. Amen.